So today I get a mailed-in portable DAT recorder by Sony. This is a TCD D10 Pro, and it's got an error code coming up on the screen. So it's going to be a mechanical problem, more than likely, that's causing this one to not operate. So today we're going to look at this one and see if I can get it functional. Let's check it out. We're going to look at this TCD D10 Pro today. Let's see if I can get this one working. This one's been modified. I wonder who did the modification on this one. wonder what the modification is on this one. Okay, let's see what it does. First of all, let's just try powering it up. It says no tape. Error 24 on the display. I guess the first thing I would think on this one is maybe a loading belt. We'll take a look and see what uh, the problem might be. First things first, we'll remove the bottom cover. Okay, the loading belt is in here. I can't see it just yet. Oh, there it is. I just want to observe if this is uh, loading correctly. Don't hear anything. Don't hear anything rattling around. Looks like someone stripped the screws on this one too to check out this side. So I see what the mechanism is doing. Let's see if I can see anything mechanical that's wrong with it before getting right into this unit. So the reason I said that about the screws being stripped is I have another one, a non-pro version of this, which uh, I haven't published a video yet. It was not repairable due to other problems in, internal on it, but somebody had stripped all the screws inside trying to get into it. And I'm uh, going to leave that one at this point anyway. Uh, I don't think it's going to be repairable because I found some damage inside that uh, requires a part which is uh, unobtainable. It's got a damaged ribbon cable in it. But we might publish that one at some point. Um, but this one here, being a better machine, I figure this one's worth putting a little more time into to see if we can get this one to run. This is serial number 10080. Very early production, although I don't think they probably made that many of these machines. It wouldn't have been a high volume machine, I don't think. <clears throat> but it will not attempt to load unless I close the secondary cover and I can't observe what things are doing with the cover.
I guess the first thing I have to do on this one is to see why that's uh, sticking. So let's just remove the controls. I hate doing this because this rubber quite often will crack. I'm going to remove the controls here, both of them. I'm going to remove these rubber uh, covers because there's a screw underneath there that has to be removed to take the control off. And it's a hex key. It's a two point two millimeter, a two millimeter. Okay, then I have to remove the front panel because I have to remove the circuit board to inspect the loading mechanism. The problem is I can't operate it with it apart because I have to unplug the uh, drum motor here. But I can turn it through the operation by hand, I think, and <clears throat> should be able to see why it's not working properly. There was an extension cable kit required to work on these things, which of course aren't available anymore. And I don't have one. And I don't know anybody who does. This is the first one of these machines I've ever seen. Okay, now I can remove the screws that hold down the board. These are slotted screws. They actually are special screws that Sony had a special security bit for that had a pin in the middle to align it, but you could just use a regular screwdriver, regular slotted screw. This is what I want to check here. I just want to check the loading. See how smooth the loading is. And if I can see anything jamming when I run it through the cycle. So what I found is the sub-loading gear, like one turns one direction and the other turns the other to move the two guides in opposite directions, and one of them appears to be off by about a tooth, so it's getting to the end of his travel and jamming. One thing that happened when I was adjusting the alignment of this is the cut washer broke and I don't have another cut washer the same size as this. I took it off carefully but it broke trying to put it back on so what I've done is I've just I've wrapped a bit of wire around here this is to keep this gear from falling out so the gear can't come down 
And typically what I would do is I'll just, if I want to, I mean, this is never going to come off now as it is. This is tight. This is never going to come off. But if I want to make sure that it didn't, I could just put a tab, just a little dab of solder on the, on the copper there just to make sure that it's never going to fall off, even though it won't because it's bent around, all the way around, and it's in the groove. So we used to do this all the time if we couldn't get, if we couldn't get a cut washer um, for the exact size that we needed, we would just bend a piece of copper wire around and lock it in place. But I could just go in here like this and just tack a little bit of solder on there like that. And that would keep that from ever opening up. Now, if someone needed to take it off, they would just have to cut it, right? But this will prevent this thing from from falling off. The gear turns freely, right? It just prevents this it pre prevents this from ever coming off. So I just I disconnected the drum and I took the board out and I just adjusted the uh, alignment ever so slightly. One um, one cog on one of the two uh, loading arms. Let's just try it and see whether I've had any any changes in what happens. Whether this thing's still going to jam up or whether it's going to... Well, that's a better sign. I don't have the error anymore. I wonder if this thing's going to actually play anything. Well, it is playing, but it's, uh, it's not playing very well yet. Sounds like big time tracking errors on this unit. Pull the top cover off and see what uh, if I can get at the guides. It just sounds like an alignment problem at this point. I'm still wondering what the modified means on this. It looks like a, an original Sony sticker. Like perhaps there was a factory mod that needed to be done. I never worked on any of these machines. This is the first one of these I've seen. And hopefully it'll be the last one because I'm not a big fan of working on DAP machines. I've worked on a few mostly my own, but I'm not crazy about them. Okay, where are the guides on this to adjust? It looks like the guides can be adjusted through here. Let's just load a tape up and see whether that is why it sounds as bad as it does, whether it's just an alignment issue. Yeah, 
there are the guide posts right there I don't even know where to plug in to, to look at this on a scope but it looks like this one's got different uh, AD converters in it than the other one definitely differences between the uh, the 10 and the, 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 the TCD 10 or TCD D10 and D10 Pro they're definitely different machines internally the mechanism might be the same but internally these machines are different let's just see whether I can get the alignment eared in let's just see what we can do because it sure sounds like an alignment problem I think at this point I'm going to try and find myself a manual. Now, now that I know that it, it, it will sound good, it's just an alignment issue, uh, I'm going to try and find a manual and find where the test point is so that I can put the scope on and uh, verify the uh, levels. But uh, I've got it playing now to the point where it's, it's actually not sounding too bad. There just appears to be still some errors. So, um, yeah, let's find a manual for it. So the two test points I'm looking for after looking up the manual is RF test point is 529, which uh, I just saw that. Where did I see it? It was down here somewhere. Where was 529? Right there. Test point 529, and the other one is test point 521. So I'm going to connect a couple wires to those test points so that I can connect my scope up, and then we'll um, look at the RF. So let me just hook a couple fine wires up that's probably the easiest way to uh, get the signals away from the board here therefore I can I can test it 
and scope it. See if we can get the alignment looking good. At least get one of two of these units functional. Okay, it looks like the entrance side is not out, out it's not aligned properly, so let's just adjust the entrance side guide. You can see it here. Now oh, it's looking a little better and sounding better too. Amazing how quick you can get the alignment when you put a scope on it. That's actually passable. We're only going to see one output, right? Because we're only looking at one head. The other head's over in dead space of the tape at this point. So it's actually showing both heads because the way uh, the way a DAT tape is, it's only it's it's. There's only one head in contact for 50% of the time. It's only a 90 degree wrapper, so this is normal. What you want is you want a flat waveform for both. Like this is showing one head, but the other head will be the same. If I scope this back there, now we're seeing both heads. Head A, the dead space, head B. And it's... Sounding not too bad now. Now I'm just going to put it through my testing. I can't play this music. I'll get a copyright strike. But I'm going to put play my music. And I'm going to listen to this and see how it sounds. I can play this one. This is uh, music that I had uh, made for me. You'll recognize it. Because I've used this as an opening. But I've got like uh, five versions on here. I'll let them play through. This is an original uh, studio tape. That's the five cuts that I had commissioned for a production that I was doing 
years ago. So I had a local musician do that for me. Anyway, this one, sounding good. I played my Beatle Abbey Road tape through it beginning to end. Sounded great. And uh, I've played the Music Bakery a bit there. Uh, this tape, Music Bakery, I can play this, but it's it's an old tape that may have some dropouts on it and some damage just because it's been in dozens of machines. But uh, playing this one fine as well. All these tapes are old, right? I mean, there's no such thing as a new DAT tape because they haven't made the format since I think 2005 was when they stopped making these machines and stopped making the tapes. So the tapes are, you know, 16 years old at the newest. The oldest ones I've got are you know, well over 20 years, probably closer to 25 maybe even getting closer to 30. I I bought into DAT myself personally uh, when it first came out. That's how long I've been using it. I had a DAT player in my car and it was a, it was a 1986 uh, vehicle that I had a DAT player in so I had I had DAT back in the, you know, in the in the late 80s. Late 80s early 90s. Most of my tapes are are that old. But they're holding up. As you can hear, I think this one's a success. So all that's left to do is put this one back together. As I say, uh, he sent the guy that sent me this one sent me two of them. The other one I'm not even going to go there because uh, it's got it's got problems. Somebody's been into it, and the last thing I like getting into is machines that other people have been into. And when I start seeing strip screw heads all over the place. Then I get a little bit nervous and say, what I found on that one, uh, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to even try. It's just not worth it. So he's got a machine that he can have for parts for when this one, uh, you know, the head wears out or something. But uh, this one's done. As you can hear, it's playing perfectly. So time to put this one together and send this one on its way. So time to reassemble. First I'll replace the front cover. Notice that I placed the different screws, like for the different covers, um, different components in different places, like the screws at the back of the bench are the screws from the bottom cover, the screws to the right were the screws from the top cover, and the screws over on the left were from the front face. That's because they're different length screws. So I want to make sure I get the right screws in the right place because put a short screw where a long screw is supposed to go, Generally not going to cause a problem, but a long screw or a short screw is supposed to go. That can cause a problem because it could hit something behind and cause a short circuit. So you want to make sure that if you've got long and short screws that you place them separate so that you know where they go. Record knobs go back on the front.
it, give it one last test. Yes, it has a built-in speaker. Real hi-fi sound from that. Sounds a little better. Anyway, that's it. TCD D10. Back up and running. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.